Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, where'd you learn how to milk a cow? I just do what comes to me naturally. Well, you certainly do milk beautifully. Not a bit like an architect. Just look at the contented look on Majesty's face. Our cows always look contented while being milked. Oh, darling, you're too modest. Majesty, he does milk beautifully, doesn't he? No answer, see? She's so contented she doesn't even answer. There we are, girl. That's that. You mean that's all? That's all. All right, push aside, Majesty. Come on over. Come on. Whole bucket. Golly. For your second milking today, you're doing fine, girl. Ah, too fine. Majesty, listen, can't you, can't you dry up a little? Do you have to overdo yeah, everything? Wait a minute, don't give her any ideas. Oh, shush. Majesty, now, don't you think it'd be better to sort of just give us a nice average of, say, oh, ten quarts a day all year round instead of twenty quarts for a few months and then nothing at all? That is not the way Majesty does it. David... Why don't you teach me how to milk, Majesty? Next time. She's all finished now. Oh, next time. Next time. Fritz will be here next time. Why do you think it looks very difficult to milk a cow? It is a very special skill mm. and talent. Very you special. say that because you know how and I don't. I know. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose we'd better get back to the house. Here, give me that pail. Golly, all this milk. Majesty, you're a most generous cow. Now, put that towel back on the hook, would you, darling? Yeah. I'll help you pour the milk into one of the cans, too. You're getting to be a real dairy maid. Well, I've been watching Fritz. Isn't she had beautiful eyelashes, David? What's she saying? Oh, she's probably thinking of summer and green grass and daisies and out to pasture with her calf. Calf sleeping, you know. Maybe it's dreaming. Golly, I hope she doesn't start giving us milk soon. No, don't worry. Honestly, will you listen to me, David, complaining because we have too much milk? <laughs> the world is certainly out of balance, isn't it? David, I think the wind's blowing open the barn door. You know, we have to find a way of making it faster. The animals will freeze. You know, the door's all right. Goodbye, Ruby, you sweet old pig. Sleep tight. Sweet dreams. You talk to me in exactly the same tone that you talk to that sweet Pig. Well, you should be flattered, my sweet man. You youngins in here? Oh, hello. Mr. Tucker, is that you? Tucker B. Your housekeeper says she was in the barn. You mean Bertha? Oh, wait till I tell her her new title. <laughs> yeah, I just got through milking Majesty. How's she milking since she freshened and you put her heifer on skim milk? Beautifully. She's giving upwards of 20 quarts. Ah, she's a fine cow. Yeah, you bet your life she's the best. It's a long time between cows like Majesty. Yeah, we're just going back to the house. Come on over and say hello to her. Oh, she'll love seeing you again, Mr. Tucker. Oh, she won't remember me. Oh, she, she won't remember it was I that was responsible for bringing you and her together. She'll nope. remember. You uh, have uh, inside dope, I take it? I don't need inside dope. I just know. Oh, a secret between you two girls. Only we're two mothers, David, not girls. Are you still girls to me? <laughs> Cold night out. Yes, it is. a duck's foot in winter. <laughs> your barn, your barn's warm and sweet. We owe it all to Majesty. Take a curtsy, Majesty. She did! <laughs> Listen to her. She knows it's you, a friend coming, Mr. Tucker. Oh, no, ma'am. She don't recognize old Jared Tucker. She's just lowing because she wants to make a good impression. I'm a handsome codger, and she's just a friendly cow. Well, <laughs> took a good many weeks for her to start lowing when we came near her. Look at the way she's looking at you, Mr. Tucker. Uh, that cow remembers that you bargained her for us, and you don't do her credit, Mr. Tucker, if you don't admit she does. You hear what they say, girl? They say you remember me. Well, how you been, hey? Hope you done right, Billy Norton. <laughs> Told them what a fine cow you are. Sang your praises like you was a queen of Sheba. And she's done very well by us, mm. Mr. Tucker. First a heifer, and now she's flooding us in milk and cream and butter. That, that'd be the gist of what I come to talk to you about. Oh? About Majesty? Yep, I, uh, <clears throat> don't know exactly how to put it, Mrs. Norton, but I, uh, come to talk to you about Majesty. You, you, you don't want to buy her from us, do you? 
I fixed it so she was sold to you, ma'am, not to me. I know, but maybe now you wish you'd... Matthew Warren sold her to you, Mrs. Norton. Sold her to you for a fair bargain. I seen to that. Bargain was fair to you, it was. Now, as much as I'd want majesty, I wouldn't take her if you was to give her to me. I'm sorry. Well, I, I should have known you were that kind of person. Dave and I have gotten so attached to majesty that... Well, I, I could understand your feeling about her that way, too, and... Wishing you'd bought her for you. Well, the way a man feels ain't always the way a man acts. Worse luck. Mm. Mr. Tucker, if there's anything you need or want, all you have to do is say it. We're so beholden to you for this cow that you bargained for us to buy that well, whatever it is on your mind, just speak up. Well, you're fine lad to do business with, Mr. Norton. A man can deal honest with a man like you. I uh, come over to make a proposition. Of course, you don't have to accept. Well, I do accept. Without even hearing what the proposition oh, is. Oh, no, you'll get yourself licked in a deal acting like that, Sean. <laughs> Might even get yourself licked by me. Now, I'm, I'm <laughs> warning you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take my chances. Well, it's a funny thing. When I'm aiming to close a bargain with Matthew Warren, I pull every trick I know of. Because I know he'd slime me out of every red cent I own if he could. Oh, that, that's only the way he acts. <laughs> Man can get carried away be the way he acts. Yep. Yes, we're coming to your majesty. I suppose you're just as curious to know what this is about as, as I am, aren't you, old girl? For my wife's sake, Mr. Tucker, what is it I can do for you? Well, Mr. Norton, my cow's milk production's dropped off. Oh. Blush to tell you. Because I don't care about admitting misfortunes. I don't like you to think that I ain't a good milk raiser. I wouldn't think it's, that. It's the way of cows, Mr. Norton. My cows are kind of slackening up. A few of them are with calf. A few of them just freshened, and the rest of them just don't seem to be quite as uh, enthusiastic as they should be. Just one of them things. You know, that's just what I was saying to David, Mr. Tucker. Either they're giving too much or they're giving too little. My wife thinks that cows are undependable. Oh, cows can be the most dependable critters there are. Especially considering they're women. But in spite, they're dependable. You can always count on cows to run dry when you need them most. <laughs> I'm starting to feel very guilty, David, that we're the flood and our neighbor Tucker is the drought. Oh, it wouldn't matter much, of course, except I am in the milk business. Mm. Put in a few chosen words, I got her out of milk to deliver, and I, I ain't got the milk to deliver. That's about the whole story. Is, um, is that all? That all. Sonia... You don't realize obligations is business, and business is cash, and cash is money. I realize that any milk Majesty gives us is yours, Mr. Tucker, so there's no problem. I would not accept her milk. But isn't that what you came over for? First things first. Uh, how many quarts of Majesty's milk and cream and butter do you need, Mrs. Norton? Oh, well, we certainly don't need all she's giving us. No. David, how many do you think we need? Oh, I'd say five quarts a day would be plenty. Five quarts? Mm-hmm. David, we can't drink five quarts. Well, that's including the milk for butter and cream and skim milk. Oh, oh, I thought you'd gone crazy. Five quarts. That leaves us about 15 we can give you, Mr. Tucker. I won't accept it, as I said. What? No. I come to make a deal, not to accept gifts. Well, you can't make a deal with 15 quarts of milk a day. I can. Oh, but look, Mr. Tucker, you're, you're our neighbor. You've helped us in countless ways, and now that we've a chance to help you, the least you can do is let us and let us gracefully. I ain't that kind of man. I ain't sweet. I ain't kindly. I ain't mellow. And I'm proud and never accepting gifts when I don't want to. <laughs> you Yankees, you're a hard lot. We're a hard lot to be soft with, but being soft with folks ain't no way to be friends with them. I'll buy Majesty's milk, Mr. Norton, but I won't take it from you. Oh, no, no. all right, all right. Have it your way. I'll sell it to you for, oh, 50 cents, as much as there is. Milk is uh, selling for ten cents a quart. Ten cents a quart? Ten cents. Well, last week I paid 26. That's in the bottle at the grocer clock. Well, what happens to the 16 cents in between? Middleman. Hmm. Well, middleman must be a millionaire. Why can't we be middleman? Hush up, hush up. Ten cents on the farmer's market, eh, Mr. Tucker? That's price today. Perhaps mm -hmm. it'll change tomorrow, but ten cents a quart is the price today. I'll take 15 quarts from you, son. That'll be, uh, let me see, 10 times 5, 5, 
Dollar, dollar fifty cents, hmm, David? Oh, you can multiply, too. Yeah, you want sure. me to pick it up? No, I'll have Fritz bring it over to you. Uh, then it's a deal. It's a deal. Shake on it. Like I says, you're a fine man to do business with. Well, I have a lot to learn. Hey, yeah, learn now, son, from the best teacher. From old Jared himself. <laughs> All right, we'll start on that tomorrow. Right. Well, I'll be getting on home. So I'll be dropping stitches worrying about me. Oh, please give my <laughs> regards to your sister. I will, I will. She'll smile sad and send them back in her name. <laughs> well, goodbye, Majesty girl. Good night, Majesty. Well, how does she look to you, Mr. Tucker? Oh, I'd say she looks exactly like a cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, God be with you, son. All right, thanks Thank for coming you. over, Mr. Tucker. Your business, your business. And if you happen to come across Matthew Warren, you might tell him we managed to deal without him. Well, good night. <laughs> good night. night. I like that old man. He's awful hard bit, but I like him. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Say, do you realize that we're in business, darling? Our investment is starting to pay off? At the rate of a dollar and a half a day. And what's the matter with a dollar and a half a day? We're mm-hmm. selling our milk. We're selling the produce of our own farm. Mm-hmm. There's a cow in our barn, and the milk she's giving is earning us money. Darling, you sound as if she's earning a million dollars. She's earning more than a million dollars. She's earning what could be independence. It's 15 quarts of milk, David. Yeah, well, multiply that a hundred times, if you know how. It's no longer a dollar and a half a day. Mm, but that's all it is now. No. Are you so nearsighted? Well. Don't you realize that this means that if we wanted to, we could be completely independent? That I could be working for myself. Why, why I could practically retire. Well, I, I don't know why you bother with architecture at all. I don't know why I bother talking to you at all. <laughs> oh, darling, you dope. I understand. It doesn't matter that it's only a dollar and a half. It doesn't matter that out of that dollar and a half is the cost of feed, and fritz, and the income tax, and pails, and amortizing the cow in the barn. All of that doesn't matter. What does matter is that we could build a life out of this if we had to. Oh, David, we're so rich. Because we have a dollar and a half a day? Darling, what we have, millions couldn't buy. Few day-in, day-out pleasures can compare with the joys of hospitality, of good talk and pleasant refreshments shared with friends. And the cost of such hospitality need be very little. A tray filled with bottles of Coca-Cola just off the ice says more fully than words alone, relax, refresh yourself. It's nice to have you here. Keep enough Coke on hand so that such a welcome is always ready in your home. Uh, evening, Mr. King. Evening, Jared Tucker. So, Majesty's milking fine, eh? Yes, so I heard the Norton say. I knew she would, though. Majesty's a right good cow. Well, Majesty's certainly made Claudia and David feel like a couple of real dairy farmers. Hey, dang near are. That uh, Majesty cow's good enough to be a herd nearly. A herd, yep. Well, they feel so farmer-like, in fact, Mr. Tucker, that tomorrow it's an evening well spent with the Sears Roebuck catalog. And the evening is about all that is spent. The Sears Roebuck catalog, eh? Well, uh, that book is a disease with Delilah. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mr. Tucker. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.